that this place is so close to Tokyo. Less than 15 minutes from Tokyo's trendy Shimokitazawa district lies a neighborhood that houses some of Japan's best preserved and most fascinating history. A doorway into the past that seems to have escaped the typical tourist Japan must do list. Welcome to Mukogaoka Yuen, a quiet neighborhood in Kawasaki and a quaint escape into Japan's bygone days. First stop on this hot day is food, and we're gonna go to Fet Le Marche. They do vegetarian and vegan macrobiotic Japanese food and desserts, so hopefully, we can get something good to eat. No matter where you go in Japan, you're gonna come across a really, really big crow. vegan macrobiotic lunch set and it comes with iced tea which is nice because it's very very hot. Uh, oh it's good. It's really refreshing. So they also do non-vegan non-vegetarian macrobiotic food so if you want to eat meat you can. Uh, okay, itadakimasu. Let's let's do this. I want to try the uh, sweet chili thing first. Mm. So this tastes like prawn, but it's not prawn. But the consistency is very, very similar to prawns in sweet chili. But they're not prawns. It's um, is it like a tofu? I think you mentioned. It's very interesting. Mmm, really good. We have some mushrooms in there. Oh my god, it's so delicious. I could eat this every day. It's so good. The food was delicious. They also do vegan and vegetarian cakes and they look just amazing. Walking through the small streets of this neighborhood, you'll come across traditional Japanese architecture quietly hidden amongst the newer developments. The main shopping areas, on the other hand, have plenty of bars and restaurants. One thing I 100% recommend is stopping by Miyoshino and trying a traditional Japanese suite. So I just picked up a traditional Japanese sweet, which is a monaka sweet, and this one is with sesame paste. So a monaka sweet is like an ice cream cone with a filling inside, and the traditional filling is red bean or maybe sesame, and I tried red bean before, so I want the sesame this time. So when I get home today, I am going to eat it. I kind of want to try it now on camera as well, just because... Uh, no, just because it looks really good. So this is what it looks like and it says taro on the front. So you see it's like an ice cream cone. Mmm, it's really nice. Oh, a very deep flavor. Mm, I highly highly recommend this. It's only 160 yen so it's a good traditional Japanese snack to try if you are traveling this area. I really like this. I love how delicate the pastry is on the outside. Look how delicate this is. It's very, very thin. And then the filling inside is rich and thick. So it's very flavorful. My favorite place in Mokogoko Yuen has to be the Japan Open Air Folk Art Museum. This museum has been around since 1967 and it is an immersive experience of past architecture, beauty and culture of Japan. On display you can find over 25 old folk houses. They have been transported here from all over the country and are perfectly preserved for the future. It does! So this tiger matches my fox. Oh, look how amazing this place is! It's so spacious! 
This place is actually really big. A very rich family must have lived here, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Is this them? The Hara family. The second person from the right is the ninth representative of the Hara family. So this house belonged to them. There's actually a smell of burning in the air, like a smell of fire. Um, and the fire comes from within the houses themselves. And that is because the fire was used to keep out the bugs from the roof. So like the smoke would go up and keep the bugs away. It gives it like a really nice kind of smoky scent. One thing I really love about Japan is how they label um, all the trees so you know what tree it is. It's the Japanese black pine. There's so much history here, it's so fascinating. So this is the Ioka family house. Something I didn't expect, in a lot of these houses the roofs are actually very very high, the ceilings are very high. It's, it's amazing, it's like something out of a Ghibli film. I felt a strange sense of nostalgia when reading the information about the families who used to live in these houses, or the people who use these spaces. It really makes me wonder if there are any current generations who are related to these families, and if they know about these houses, or maybe even if they have visited to get in touch with their family's past. The heat today is particularly strong, so I'm very sorry about my sweaty appearance at the moment. Oh, this is so beautiful, it's crazy. So there are over 25 houses here, some of which have been moved from very far down south Japan. Um, so it's quite incredible that they have been kept to this condition. Oh, what's up here? As well as the houses, in this open-air museum you can see the lifestyle of past traditional Japanese living. Everything from the spaces to the sounds and scents in the air paints a picture of what life might have been like. hot outside um, and that kind of works because the temperatures aren't as high but at the same time it closes a lot sooner so. So there's also a really big park here. Mogokawako Yuan actually had a huge amusement park but that closed many many years ago and instead now we have this. Many many old houses. So we got done at the Japan Open Air Folk House Museum and just to let you guys know, um, you do get a little leaflet in your language which tells you a lot about all of the houses as well as some of the events that are taking place. So this is some of the stuff that you can do here but I will also put a link in the description box if you want to check it out and time it with your arrival in Japan um, because not all events are on throughout the year but it's definitely worth it. It's only 500 yen per person and it's just a really great way to connect with traditional Japanese culture. This is definitely one of the more interesting places that I've been to in Japan just because the houses that are presented here are from all over Japan. They have been moved from those areas to here and they are very well maintained too and just looking at it and like even smelling the scent of the whole area you kind of really get in touch with history. So I think if you love history, if you love Japanese culture then this is definitely definitely a must and it's not very far from Tokyo at all. And I also want to apologize 
for how sweaty I have been in this video. It is unbelievably hot in Japan right now. Like this is like being in a steam room. You can see like my hair, it's like sticking to my face. It's definitely gross, but I've kind of just, I've gotten used to it now. Um, there's nothing I can do. There's like literally nothing I can do. I keep like fanning myself. It's not helping, but there seems to be a really dark cloud heading this way and on my weather app it says that it's going to rain so I've actually got my fingers crossed that it might rain and release some of that heat. I just can't believe that there's not many people here at all. Um, there's definitely no foreign tourists here. I believe that I was the only foreigner in this entire place. Everybody else seems to be Japanese and that's just shocking to me. If you come to Japan, try and find places like these. Um, if you're staying in Tokyo, it only takes, what, about like 20 minutes maximum to get here from Tokyo. Um, yeah, there's, there's no reason why you should not come here. Since it is so hot today and we've been out all day walking around looking at old Japanese houses, I think why not and I think why not go and finish off the day with a traditional Japanese summer dessert which is kakigori. I actually saw a cafe on the way here that does kakigori and I really want to try it so let's go there. <laughs> Look at how huge those flowers are! They're so big! They're bigger than my head! Wow! Now walking to get some delicious iced icy cold kakigori. Actually, it's, it is starting to cool down a little bit because it is after five. But I need, I need the kakigori goodness. So I got the Ringo Kakigori with soft cream and condensed milk. Um, Ringo is apple, so I got like the regular size. I've tried Ichigo, which is like strawberry Kakigori, and I think I've tried matcha once in Kyoto. So I kind of wanted to try a different flavor, and I asked the girl if she'd recommend me something, and she said apple is like the new thing here. So I wanted to try apple. We also got two coffees, like really big, super-sized iced coffees. So I don't know how big they're gonna be, but hopefully they're not like huge. Although I could definitely drink one now. I'm very thirsty and I need caffeine. Look how big this nice jug of iced coffee is. This is good. This is what I need right now. Ooh. Oh, they're little nuts. How thoughtful. Oh, it's so big. Look at it, it's amazing. That is impressive, isn't it? Good luck. Are you not going to try any? No. Wow, John. Wow. Yeah. Look how big this is. It's actually very light because it is only shaved ice. Mm. So the shaved ice tastes a bit like apple pie without the crust um, because there's pieces of apple in there, the condensed milk gives it like a pie flavour and the ice cream is just a nice little addition on top. I don't think I can finish this shaved ice. There's a little bit left, but only Japan could take ice and make it so delicious. That was so delicious. On a hot summer's day, it's like the best dessert you could have. Done at the cafe now, done with the shaved ice. It was delicious, I highly, highly recommend. Um, this area, Mugokaroko Yuen, actually reminds me of Sagamo a little bit. I'm not sure why, maybe because it feels quite historic and Sagamo itself is a very historic area in Tokyo. But yeah, fun day, um, very close to Tokyo. If you come here, you wouldn't be going too far out of your way. And it's a good stopover, especially if you're going to other places that are also in Kanagawa. Look at this old UFO catcher. It looks so old. Is that Pets Life or Pets or whatever that film is called? It does not look new at all, does it? It looks like quite an old UFO catcher. Feels quite retro.
Should we go? This is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe. And also thank you to Kira Maid for providing me with some amazing t-shirts to wear while I travel and explore different places. We'll be having an upcoming collaboration, so be sure to check out the description box if you want to keep up to date. Again, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.